Hello, Carrie Kay back with more Dirty Laundry, and today our guests are Super Chunk. Hello. Yay. You have a fly. Oh my gosh. I just killed nice. a fly on your head. What is your origin story? What's, uh, what are the roots of Super Chunk? Well, we've been around for 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, and we started the band in 1989. Uh, Laura Balance, who's not here today, uh, the bass player, and I started it with a guy named Jack McCook, who was, uh, I think we were living together at the time, and uh, a drummer named Chuck Garrison. And so that was the initial uh, lineup, and we played a few shows and um, made the first album and a couple singles with that lineup. We were originally called Chunk, but then there was another Chunk uh, band from New York. They were smooth jazz or something. Yeah. They were, they're not Scronk. very smooth. They're more, <laughs> yeah, a little more scronky, more like uh, knitting, knitting factory, factory downtown New York kind gotcha. of um, music. Percussion, anyway. Chunk was pretty good. Uh, Sam Bennett and Chunk, and but Sam Bennett didn't want us to also be called Chunk, so we amended our name and became Super Chunk. And at a certain point, Jack McCook decided he didn't want to tour. And I knew Jim uh, from college. We didn't go to the same college, but I met him when I was in school in New York. And Jim was in school in Connecticut. And then Jim moved down to North Carolina and joined the band. And then a couple years later, uh, John Worcester replaced Chuck on drums. And then that's basically the lineup we've had ever since. Um, up to this most recent album, which is called I Hate Music, which we made um, and came out uh, last year. Mm -hmm. And Laura, though, in that around the time we made I Hate Music, decided she didn't want to tour anymore because her ears were bothering her. Uh, it's not tinnitus specifically; it's a it's a similar condition that makes it very painful for her to be around loud noises. Is that from not wearing earplugs or? You know, I think that Laura was always pretty good about wearing earplugs, yeah. but um, but I think it's just long-term exposure to loud bands like her band, like her own band, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and other bands, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so, so uh, Jason Narducci uh, has been playing bass with us since mm -hmm. the record came out on all the touring that we've done. So that's how we got to where we are. I've been listening to you guys since I was about 13. Wow. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not bad. Gonna, I'm not going to ask <laughs> how old you are. I'm saying if you start <laughs> listening to good bands when you're 13, though, that's like a good, you I had know. good older cousins. Um, I had a good older, I mean, I had more than one good cousin, but I had an older cousin who kind of got me into punk <laughs> rock in a way. Yeah. Also, she lived in Richmond, and we lived in North Carolina. But she was really into David Bowie. That was like her thing. So like she had his hair. She had like a Aladdin saying like hair, hairdo, and um, and so Mary like got she got me really into David Bowie, and but also punk rock because there was a really good hardcore scene in Richmond. Mm -hmm. And she gave me an album by a band called <laughs> One Year for Christmas. She gave me an album by a band called White Cross. That's from Richmond, and a, and a um, GBH album. Uh, and so uh, I, I give a lot of credit to my cousin Mary for being the cool older cousin that told me that good Bless music Bless Mary. Was. We have ten studio albums and then three compilations of like B-sides and stuff like that. We have like a ton of songs. Yeah. To the point where we have enough songs that you can go back and go like, man, I told, <laughs> I'll, I'll send John, I'll send John Worcester, the, the drummer, mm -hmm. a text or an email saying like, why don't we play blah 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 this song he'll be like I don't know what that is <laughs> uh, so like do we have enough songs that there's some random things out there that you just forget exist and then you listen to them and think like wow that could be actually kind of good and sometimes it is kind of good and you start playing it more regularly and sometimes you play it once and you just go nope there's a reason we don't play That's that why we have shelved that yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you I have feel like the for like liking like what's your favorite record like the only way I ever hear whenever I hear our song records I don't like sit around listening to them but if if I do because we're trying to relearn an old song 
the only way I really like I like them from memories of making them. So um, like the funnest records to make are the ones that you know, they're like your favorite record, but they're not really like the record that other people would ever. Yeah. Like I think so of Indoor is Living is sort of like a uh, like a record that a lot of people feel ambivalent about, but it was the most fun to record. I thought for me, we just had it was a fun two weeks in Bloomington, Indiana. And that's how I, you know, that's how I remember it. I like that answer. So but it's sort of like the nostalgia that surrounds yeah, the recording process. You know, for me. Yeah. That's good. I actually haven't gotten that one yet. What was your most memorable live show? Mm -hmm. Do you have any like crazy fan stories? Mm, crazy fan. Our fans are not that, I mean, the crazy ones, we try to not spend enough time around to have crazy stories about them. <laughs> yeah. um, smart. But uh, the, 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 our last show was somewhat memorable. What happened? Just like uh, oh, the most recent show we yeah, played. You mean we yeah, wait, two weeks ago and for our, the 25th anniversary, Jason fell down, cut his head open, blood pouring out. The guitar stopped in the middle of a song. All kinds of shit was going on that it's like, like it was what's like, on? But it, it still ended up being a good show somehow. Yeah, a lot of times, fun. a lot of <laughs> times, like, what's when gonna happen next? Yeah, but a lot of times that can really, for me anyway psychologically sure. I will get thrown off and I'll just start then I'll only be able to think about yeah. all the shit that just went wrong even though yeah. people in the crowd are just like whatever they're on to the net they've moved on <laughs> why can't I move on I'm also, still, I'm still thinking it, about like, like the, show. I'm thinking about the five words that I couldn't remember from the <laughs> three songs ago or whatever but yeah I looked up that so it was part of the merged 25th anniversary yeah and uh, at the cat's cradle in Carbo North Carolina and mm -hmm. and we were playing in yeah, at some point it was it was only like one or two songs into the set, and I look over and John's asking Jason if he's okay, and, and there's blood just like running down the side of his face, <laughs> and I totally missed it, but he he had, he had wiped out. What, yeah, he jumped up in the air. How? He jumped up in the air, and um, and he just came down on his bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but it, but it, but I was watching the whole time, and his back landed on like kind of the drum riser. And oh, I, I seriously, yeah. I seriously, the first thing like when I saw it, I said, "Show's over." You know, we gotta call an ambulance. Yeah. This is a broken back. This guy, he's not gonna walk again. I mean, I seriously thought that. But he immediately just kind of like stood up and he didn't know that he had blood. Yeah, he didn't realize that he was going. And I kept looking at him, and he, he, he and I was like, yeah, and we're playing, and then after the the song, I was like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> but I was just like, I was like <laughs> pointing, and he he didn't. He was just like, oh, that's fine. And then he figured it out after the next song when it was just like, oh. So it was, I don't know. I'm the weak link, and I just kept thinking, I'm next. You're next. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Something bad's gonna happen. Trap to door. Me. Yeah. Did you know when you signed Arcade Fire that they were going to be as huge? As they are. When we heard the demos from Funeral, which is 10 years old, by the way. Yeah. Um, this September. Uh, when we heard the demos and heard the record, there's it was obviously appealing and and catchy and all the things, you know. Hmm. But but then they they came and played a um, they played a, a show in in Chapel Hill before the record came out. Uh, they came and played a show at a, a club. It's not even a club. It's a bar called the Cavern or the Cave, mm -hmm. which is an underground bar in Chapel Hill. It calls itself the oldest, oldest tavern in Chapel Hill or North Carolina cool. or something like that. It's tiny. It's really tiny. That but it was rad. the sort of thing where like they had a day off and a tour that they were doing with the <laughs> unicorns. Oh, nice. And so we said, well, like come play because we'd never seen them before. You know, we were like, come play Chapel Hill. You know. Were they opening for the unicorns? They're opening for the unicorns on this tour, oh, and then they funny. had a day off, and or they didn't even have a day off. They had a show, I think, with the unicorns in South Carolina, and we we're like, "Don't go play South Carolina, come play Chapel Hill." So they came and played the cave, and then seeing them in this tiny bar uh, for the first time, and they were already an amazing live band. It did give you that feeling of like, "Wow!" Like when people see this band, like they're gonna go crazy. And they did. And I had that same feeling seeing them the first time they played Coachella, mm -hmm. thinking like if I was 16, like this would be my favorite band. Yeah. You know. So there's no way to predict when something's gonna be really big. 
uh, for sure, but there was definitely like a feeling around that band as more and more people got to see them yeah. play. You know. Are there any bands that um, have sort of uh, fallen through the cracks that you were about to sign that kind of went with somebody else? Uh, I mean, I'm sure that there have been over the years, but we've always had so many bands. In other words, I feel like there's been times when we wished that we could work with someone or thought we were going to and then it didn't work out. But we've always had so much that we were working on that it's never been like, oh, if only we would have signed so-and-so. Yeah. Everything would have been different, you <laughs> right. know? Yeah. Um, you guys are doing okay. Yeah, and not, and I don't just mean like we sell enough records, I just mean, you know, you're so busy just working on what you're working on, there's never a moment where you think like, oh, we just need some more bands. <laughs> yeah. like we, always have, we have so many artists that we work with, and you want to be able to give them all the the proper amount of attention. You know right. I mean? There was no one in particular that slipped through your fingers, though, that you were like... We were at one point supposed go? to... We were at one point supposed to put out a Sebado record, Aww. and then they signed a Sub Pop. Oh, I but, remember them. But, you know... We, got, we had them on the a, show. That was a solid 23 years ago, I think. <laughs> 22 or 23 years ago. Um, but, uh... But eventually we ended up putting out Lou's solo records, so, you know, we got to work with Lou eventually. And yep. we did those dinosaur reissues, so it all comes around, you know. Uh, whatever happened to Butter Glory? Are they coming back? You know, it's funny you should ask because I got an email from Matt Suggs just really? today. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, I, they were good. Butter Glory is great, and I was listening to Butter Glory recently. Me too. Um, and, uh, you know, they're originally from California, from mm -hmm. Visalia, though by the time we started working with them, I think they moved to uh, Lawrence, Kansas, where they kind of went, I guess, maybe went to school and lived and yeah. became a band. But, um, but uh, so we did the, I mean, you know, you mentioned falling through the cracks, and, and, I, and sometimes people say, like, what are the albums that you put out that you think were great that no one paid attention to? And, like, I don't really like talking about things in those terms because then it sounds like those records were, if, if, so, if not enough people listen to them then the record was a failure or something, well, you know, to me, like, the record exists and obviously you want as many people to hear it as possible, but yeah. if someone makes a great record, whether 10 people hear it or 1,000 people hear it, or 10,000 people, it can still be a successful record if, mm -hmm. if the record is what it's supposed to be, you know. So, but I think that those, you know, after Butter, Butter Glory broke up, Matt Suds made two solo records, which are both amazing. And um, he didn't tour a ton. He did some some touring, but not not a lot. And uh, I think that those are two records that people should go back and kind of rediscover because they're both really good records. Um, and the reason that I was emailing with Matt today is because he. Uh, made a, he recorded a, a new song that um, we're going to do something with on Merge. So um, he still, he still does music, but just um, not as, not as often as he used to. Yeah.